Uh, we are here in uh, Karen Bonnie's studio just outside of Del Norte, and we're going to be talking with Karen and about her involvement with the Rio Grande Headwaters Land Trust mm -hmm. and rights, big event that's coming up in August, August 15th. We'll be mentioning that more later, but first of all, thank you so much for taking time. You are a busy, busy woman. Well, thank you for coming to the studio. I really appreciate it. A, a visitor now and then is a wonderful thing. <laughs> right. <laughs> oh, you don't mind the interruption Not for a, a few bit. minutes. No, I oh, love it. Well, thank you. Uh, we're going to be talking about the event later, but first of all, I'd love to hear about your art and how you got started. Mm -hmm. and I, um, I had a gallery back in the 90s in Abiquiu, New Mexico, and I had, along with leather clothing that I did, I did some design work and won some awards with that, with buckskin, sort of high fashion clothing. Um, but I also had some drawings, and about midway in the gallery, about six years after I opened, I had some rodeo drawings, and some folks came in and saw the drawings, and they looked at them, and they traded for uh, buckskins, they traded their art, and this was Linda and Dean St. Clair. And but what they said to me was, we can help you become a painter. Your drawings are dead on. They said, but you should be painting. That's where that's where the glory is and the money and and the permanence. You know, a, a drawing isn't all that permanent unless it's really taken care of carefully. So anyway, they kind of took me by the hand, and they and other artists in the Abiquiu area also um, were my mentors and my role models and I just found that I loved it. I had done a few paintings as a child, but mostly drawings. And they were mostly of horses. Uh -huh. uh, but I kind of branched out and started doing human figures and inline skates and everything. Uh -huh. So um, I just found that I loved it. And it's, it's a lot more peaceful. Another problem is that I blew out my hands with arthritis doing the leather oh, stuff. So yes. <laughs> I kind of was forced into it by the cosmic forces, but it was a good thing. And you have been very successful. I know you Well, sure. I mean, you're never successful enough, and I hope that I never stop learning to become a better painter. Um, every year when I look back, I try to stay away from the archive, you know, for most of the time. But when I look back, I can see improvement, and that makes me happy. Who is that? Mostly from practice, or...? Are you taking more instruction? No, mostly from practice. <laughs> I'm self-taught with the exception of some workshops um, and six months painting with Linda and Dean in their studio, which helped me really get started and understand colors and things like that. Very fortunate to mm. have friends like that. <laughs> yes, I was. And another part of it that goes into it, and I like to tell this, is that everything I did up to the time I was 50 all goes into this painting. Um, I, I was a furniture refinisher, so now I build my own frames. Um, I was a, photo a commercial photographer, and of course I use that for reference. Um, just, I mean, I could name about ten different things that I've done in past lives that all go into the painting process, and it's helped to speed me up. I've only been at this for seven years. Oh. But, like I said, everything that I've done before goes into this. Mm -hmm. uh, so, are you represented by uh, galleries in the area? Or I no, I have eight galleries oh. around the west. I, the furthest east is Denver, but I'm in Montana, Wyoming. Uh, I was in California till they closed. Um, Scottsdale, oh. Texas, a couple in Texas, uh, eight different places. Keeps you very busy. Supplying oh yeah, new work. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, the trick is to have some summer galleries and some winter oh, galleries, good. so you can kind of spread it out a little <laughs> <Yeah>. bit. <laughs> but you need to do that because uh, a lot of them really get slow. Yes, and I I heard that you received some uh, recent recognition as a well. Painter. I got into I've been inducted into the Oil Painters of America OPA. Um, now I am an associate member, and uh, I will have to be juried into three of their shows in order to become the next step up. Oh. So that's the process that I'm in. Good challenge. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> and I won an award at the uh, Charlie Russell Show in oh. uh, Great Falls, Montana. This was like four years ago. Oh. And it was for the Best New Artist, which I'm very proud of. Wow. <laughs> um, 
and I have applied to Equine Artists of America. Hopefully, oh. I'll get in next year. Oh. I'm sure you will. <laughs> thank <laughs> you. And congratulations <laughs> on the rest. <laughs> well, thank you. Uh, can you tell us a little about this painting? Sure. This is my colt when she was on her first day being turned out into the big pasture and she just went crazy <laughs> she flipped a, you know did all sorts of gyrations and just ran flat out she was such a happy every time i paint some part of that scene I, it makes me really happy to see her oh, she running. Is happy. I, <laughs> in this painting i changed her color she's <laughs> she's a gray and she was very black at the time but uh -huh. but i paint her you know i change her colors yeah to uh, <laughs> give variety, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. So you live here in this wonderful place with these incredible animals. Uh, can you tell us a little how the land and, and your art oh, you bet. Are together? Well, from a small child, I wasn't really raised in a rural setting, but I couldn't wait to get there because that's where the animals were. And I guess it's, it's about animals. And being outdoors, with or without the animals, has always been at least half of my time during the day I'm outdoors. I garden, I ride horses, I train horses, I run with the dogs, I hike over the mountains, and you know, if we lose this, we lose our soul to me. And this, when we found this place eight years ago, this was like coming home. This valley and the surrounding mountains are, well, they're part of my soul. And I spent my lifetime getting here. I didn't know that, but I spent my <laughs> lifetime getting here. And, you know, anything that I can do to help preserve it is wonderful. I think these ranches that do the conservatory um, is, is necessary. It's a necessary thing or it's going to be gone. Yeah. I've been in too many places that, that everybody moved to and then it became commercialized and it's not there. Mm -hmm. You know, at some point we run out of places to go. This place I hope to see preserved. Well, you are doing a big part of it by oh, participating in the in the Keep the Rio Grande Brand, the premier mm -hmm. art event that's going to be held August 15th in the South Fork. Mm -hmm. You will be there? Yes, you With bet. your work? Mm -hmm. That is fantastic. It seems like the uh, combination of art lovers and people who appreciate the land is just the best of all worlds. Yes, it is. It is. I mean, there's nothing more beautiful than this place. Keep it that way. Yeah. And it has everything. The water is so precious. Now, you have a website. Mm -hmm. that, would you like to share that with It's It's www.karenbonnie.net. Dot net. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Uh -huh. uh, Karen will be at South Fork on August 15th for Keep the Real Grand Grand, mm -hmm. a premier art event. And this event is sponsored by the Rio Grand Headwaters Land Trust. And their website for more information is www.realgrandlandtrust.org. And uh, we hope that many people will be there that evening. It's an evening of art and fine food and fine wines. Good beer, we understand. So yes. a great <laughs> opportunity <laughs> to meet with the local and regional artists who are the best in the land. Thank you so much, Karen, for taking time to be with us. And You're very welcome. And Thank we'll you for coming. See you then. Mm -hmm. Thank you.